now we're back and we need to look at doing our Niagara sort of system to get this sort of skull to have some really cool effects on it. So if you remember, we did add the Niagara Fluid plugin to the whole mix. We did uh, produce that. Uh, sorry, we did enable that at the start of this. So now we can go in here, create a new folder. We're going to call that Niagara uh, Systems. And then we can right click in here and select the Niagara System like that. Now from here, you have a bunch of options and what we're going to do is uh, we're going to say new system from a template or behavior example, go to next and then in here it will ask you what type of, you know, you can select and for this particular case we can select the gas or you can go in here and just say, you know what, I want an empty system and call it NS um, smoke and this is going to be a one and then we can double click it. And when we bring it in here, let me just uh, show you this. We don't need the preview. Normally, you'll have a preview window right here. I would uh, advise not using that for this particular, um, because it's not going to be very useful for you. So in here, right click and you can add an emitter and then you can select parent emitters. And then you can have a look in here and do the 3D gas explosion particle source emitter or 3D gas master. But we're going to use the grid 3D Master, uh, um, gas master. Once we add that in, like that, you'll notice a lot of options in here and we actually don't need to look at all of these. We can just press this button to collapse them all. And with the emitter selected, we have all of our options over here on the right. So everything that we want to do is going to be here. Now, some of the uh, settings straight off the bat, uh, we're going to do 400 by 400 by 400 grid size. And we're going to set the pivot to zero and I'll show you why we're doing this. So let's just compile that and then we'll go back into our scene and we can actually drag this Niagara system. Sorry. And that's the Niagara system right there. Now I'm going to try and put this in such a way that we can actually see what we're doing. So let me just try and get this window in place like that. Okay, something like that. Uh, so the 400 by 400 by 400, that's what we got there. And the reason why we made it uh, like that is because this particular system is going to be on the skull. Now, uh, it's currently sitting a bit uh, not on top of the skull. So let's just take that over into the center of the stage, bring it above, and then we can actually put it above here, something like that. It's too big though, so we need to fix this. Um, now, one thing that you can do, is play around with the scale. Um, so we could put this to like a 0 0.4 or maybe a 0 0.6 or something like that. Now nah, 0 0.6 is too big. We'll do a 0 0.5 maybe. Um, and, and the way I want to sort of eyeball this is to make sure that it goes inside the skull rather than outside of it. So let's do 0 0.4 and maybe that will be okay. I'm just going to disable the grid so I can move it more precisely. Something like that for now. Okay. Um, and as you can see, it's sort of hitting that point there and that's fine. But let's just take it above now and start playing around with the shape. So um, if we need to increase the world size, which is effectively like a box between um, this, uh, you know, this is like a domain box. So it's like a square and it's having the size of 400 by 400 by 400. And if you increase this, for example, to 800, you'll notice it goes above, right? But you're also losing a bit of the resolution of the effect by doing that. So for now, let's just leave it under control at 400 by 400. We did play around with the pivot point. Now, if I reset back to 0 0.5, it just sort of moves this particular point somewhere else. So if we put that to zero, you see it's sort of centralizing it. We're getting more control. If we put it like 0 0.5, it's emanating more, um, you know, more information, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be better for us, so to speak. But we'll see. We'll see. Let's leave it at 0 0.5 for now. The resolution of the effect is set to 200, so we'll leave that there. We're going to put a pressure solver to 12, so we get a better uh, sort of pressure solver, as in, as in more iterations on our smoke, how it's being calculated. And then we have pressure relax, uh, density buoyancy. We're not going to play with those yet but we are going to play around with the gravity. So the gravity is minus 980, which means the smoke goes up. We're going to put that to 200, and now the smoke goes down. 
but you'll notice because of the pivot point that we have at 0 0.5 it's sort of hitting the floor immediately so we're going to put that to zero which will allow the smoke to fall further down now we select the niagara system which i'm trying to there we go and we can actually leave you know put that further down like that right and you're seeing that it's sort of smashing itself to the to our table there right and that's pretty cool right okay um now some other things that we want to do is play around with some uh, you know other settings such as the color and uh, you know if we have any sort of wind or anything like that into it so um the wind itself is further down if we need to do it uh but it's really um, a choice of however you want to sort of do this we're going to enable the calculate wind just so we can make it just so we can get it to push on one axis so for now it's uh, set to, to one to the x-axis we're going to put that to zero but we're going to put this one to five and give it a magnitude of 0 0.5 and let's see what happens now once the wind starts blowing we should be able to see something um it seems that the magnitude of one isn't really having a lot of effect on it so let's just try a magnitude of, of sorry 0 0.5 didn't have an effect on it let's try a magnitude of one and you're probably noticing that it's sort of coming this way um but it's not you know it's not incredible um actually oh i've actually just uh a slid instead of putting a number in there i've actually uh, you know just moved it and this is going to have a problem actually you can notice that the wind is pushing in that direction so that's not what we want uh we'll put that to zero let's put this to five and see where it's pushing so now it's pushing backwards so we don't want that either so we're going to do a minus 0.5 but the magnitude is too big so we're going to do this as a one and now okay so it's sort of coming out of the out of the eyes kind of thing that's the idea right okay so that's fine we'll just have to move on to the next options so the one thing that you're noticing in here is color is not selected so once we do that now we can actually play around with the color and we're gonna change this from this sort of red to like a like a pink kind of thing um maybe something like that i don't know i'm not really sure uh, it's very you're gonna have to play around with this but as you're noticing as we do this we're not actually getting the color that we've set and this is because there is an uh, there's this additive well the additive option is fine but it's more like the scalar emissive em well actually let me just try and see if i can uh, yeah there we go scale emission by dt i think dt i'm not sure what that stands for but once we disable that um the color that's going to come out is going to be a lot more stable um than you know actually being what we've set it to okay um we're still getting a bit of sort of color variation in there i'm gonna have a look and see you know deleting the, the decreasing this hue shift range which will then stop obscuring you know or, or messing around with the hue um and as you can see we're getting the effect that we want uh it's just very very dense very visible um, and this is kind of affecting the look and feel of this. So we can now have a look at the emit radius. We're going to put that to 55. So that effectively changes the size of the of the sphere. Put it to 100. You can see what happens with the sphere if we do that, right? So we do about 50. So we can't actually see the sphere. Um, I think we're obviously going to have to change some stuff about the uh, the wind itself. It's just not pushing enough um, onto the uh, onto this mesh onto this effect. We're only going to have to bring the mesh a bit further here, like that. Um, and now it's important that we, you know, we have a look. Um, what do we need for this wind to push to this direction? And if we do it as a sort of a, a five magnitude, that's going to be a bit too much. Uh, maybe, yeah, something like that. But more importantly, we can play with the density in here. So... Uh, first of all, all of our boundaries, all of our walls are uh, open. If I deactivate that, if I actually make them not be open, the um, you can see the smoke is hitting every wall and it's sort of creating like a fluid-like motion, right? With that in mind. Um, so it's important that you know how these sort of effects, your, how they can affect your effect because... If you if these are open, then whenever the particle hits a wall, they just sort of start disappearing. That's kind of like the uh, the idea behind it. 
Um, and now we have, um, I'm actually looking for the option for our density, which is in here, right? So we need to play around with that density figure. So for my particular purpose, I'm going to do a 0 0.3 in density. And as you can see now, it's sort of flying in here a lot better uh, from the wind because the density isn't dragging it down so much. It's not so heavy anymore, but it's still pushing quite hard. So then all the way at the top, we have some options for things like the, uh, the, the density buoyancy and things like that. So we're going to do density buoyancy to minus 0 0.8. Um, and then we're also going to be looking at uh, the pressure uh relaxation put that to one and that should give us a far better effect you can see that it's still sort of hitting over here so it's not really that nice um the way it's sort of being portrayed um so we now can have a look again at fine-tuning the effects so this is gonna be uh you know it's gonna it's gonna really take some time for you to play around with these settings until you get what you want because you've got to change so many different settings until you get what you're looking for, you know, in terms of uh, getting something that's actually looking nice, right? You're also going to be able to play around with the domain. Maybe the domain is not big enough. And this wind is definitely not helping because it's pushing way too much as well. So uh, with that in mind, let's go to the wind settings in here. And rather than do a five, we'll do like a one. So now it's not pushing so much forward as, as as it was it's still pushing forward as you notice but it's not nearly as as much as it used to now one thing that i want to do is select this light uh bring it closer to the effect and you know because we really want to be able to to sort of see how this is sort of playing right um and the light will have an effect on the level of density and so on now, we also need to look at the resolution of this. Is the resolution right? Whenever you toy around with things like resolution and domain size, make sure that you save the file before changing anything. So if we increase that to 400, we're going to get a much more of a better effect as, you'll, as you're noticing. But it's also going to have an impact on your performance. And now the wind is also taking a bigger, um, you know, sort of it has a bigger effect on it because we just improved the resolution, which is a bit weird, isn't it? So let's try with a minus one and a magnitude of one and see what happens. Yeah, okay. So that's, hmm, that's, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Um, as you can see, it can pass through in there and it sort of goes underneath as well. Um, you can make these collide if you'd like, but I find that the smoke in Unreal Engine at this scale is just not good enough for collision. So we're not really going to do that. But uh, what else can we do? I think... For us, we need we probably need a bigger emitter. So if we do a hundred, that's not gonna be good. But if we do a 75, maybe mm, I don't know. See the 50 was okay because it sort of like gives it a you know it looks a lot better. But let me just try less density on the material itself. 0 0.05. Um yeah, okay. And then for the wind, we could probably do a minus two, and let's see what happens there. Minus two seems to be pushing quite a bit. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Minus one, but with a higher magnitude. Let's see what happens there. And also, by the way, you could look at pushing the wind upwards as well, maybe. So, you know, so like, like going up, not just to the side. Um, and you, you can see that, right? You can see how it's sort of like spewing into, into these directions. Now, one thing to note in here is that it is hitting the domain walls. So you may want to start playing with that setting. So again, make sure you save before doing that. I would definitely recommend you toning down the resolution before committing, uh, maybe do a domain size of 500 in height. And what we need to do is look at the, um, th this axis. Uh, so that's 400. We're going to set that to 600. And then we're going to go at the resolution. Do a 300 first. And see what happens. Sorry, I didn't change anything. So do a 300. Because the domain size is bigger now, the resolution isn't having as much of an impact as it used to. Okay, And everything suffers for it in the sense of the resolution suffers for it. The wind doesn't uh, sort of work in the same way that it did. 
and the effect itself isn't as clean as it used to be. So you may want to up that resolution even further to maybe a 400, maybe even further than that, 500. But I would say, yeah, 500 seems to be what the resolution was previously uh, to what we had, and it definitely looks a lot better. But for performance sake, you may want to keep this down and just remember what settings you want to put it on uh, later on when you actually do the rendering, okay? So we've had the first effect done, okay? And now we want to sort of do, I mean, the, all these effects, by the way, they will trigger based on something that you're doing in the scene. So we're going to do a sequence later on where we'll be able to trigger them to do certain things at certain points rather than just sort of play continuously because right now that's what's happening. They're playing continuously. We'll be able to control that later on. Uh, but first, let's just have a look at doing a duplication of this system but make it on a larger scale and, uh, you know, really use that as a sort of a fill. And we'll also do, we'll also use collisions with that one as well. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second.